Hello and welcome. This is my wife, Mary, and I'm Ed, and we are Branch Davidian Seventh-day Adventists. We're excited you're joining us today. We present or expound on a principle or belief related to the SDA Sabbath School Quarterly each week. The Sabbath School study this quarter is entitled Family Seasons. This week's lesson is on times of loss, loss of trust, loss of freedom because of addiction, loss of life, and other troubling losses we endure in this fallen world. Ellen White saw this terrible state of things while under inspiration. She said, I was shown that a terrible condition of things exists in our world. The angel of mercy is folding her wings, ready to depart. The angel of mercy. If not for mercy, where would we be? How could we make it? Can you imagine what would happen if the angel of mercy left us? Who is the angel of mercy? We really need her, as we shall see. But she is getting ready to fold her wings, never to return if we don't respond to her cries for reformation and revival. So let's start out by reading more passages by Ellen White concerning the angel of mercy, and let's see what we can learn. Ellen White said, There is not a second probation for anyone. Now is probationary time, before the angel shall fold her golden wings, the angel of mercy, and shall step down from the throne, and mercy, mercy, is gone forever. So here we can see that this angel is not a created angel that stands before the throne, but she is somebody that is on the throne. We can also see that probation closes when she steps down from her throne. We know that when probation closes, intercession ceases. Let's look at intercession in Romans 8.26, which reads, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself, or herself, maketh intercession for us. So we can see that the angel of mercy is the Holy Spirit herself, a member of the Godhead sitting on the throne as one of our intercessors along with Jesus, our other intercessor. Please see last week's study on the two trunks of the tree of life called he and she, the two trunks, before continuing. That study reveals two intercessors, two helpers or comforters, Jesus and the Holy Spirit. The tree of life, according to Ellen White and John the Revelator, has two trunks, one on either side of the river of life. See Early Writings, page 17 in Revelation 22.2. The spirit of prophecy is for the purpose of restoring our maturity to the point where we will be able to partake once again of the fruit of the tree of life. Let's continue with the angel of mercy. In Prophets and Kings, Ellen White said, We are standing on the threshold of the crisis of the ages. In quick succession, the judgments of God will follow one another, fire and flood and earthquake, with war and bloodshed. We are not to be surprised at this time by events both great and decisive, for the angel of mercy cannot remain much longer to shelter the impenitent. So we can see that we need her very much to shelter us in our impenitent state, but mercy will not abide with us forever. This, of course, is no surprise to the Seventh-day Adventist, who is well aware of the closing of probation for us as individuals and for the world. Now let's talk for a moment about the Holy Shekinah. Ellen White said this, The Holy Shekinah, in departing from the throne above the mercy seat in the first temple, had stood upon the eastern mountain, which is the Mount of Olives, the mountain east of Jerusalem, as if loath to forsake the chosen city. Now let's compare that statement about the Holy Shekinah with one about the angel of mercy. Ellen said, While the procession was halting on the brow of Olivet, it was not yet too late for Jerusalem to repent. The angel of mercy was then folding her wings to step down from the golden throne to give place to justice and swift coming judgment. And she said this, The Spirit of God is being withdrawn from the earth when the angel of mercy folds her wings and departs. From these quotes, we can deduce that the Spirit of God, the Holy Shekinah, and the angel of mercy are one and the same person. Here is another description in the great controversy on this same connection between the Holy Spirit, mercy, and the close of probation. Notice the parallelism between the angel of mercy withdrawing her protection in the previous quotes and the Holy Spirit withdrawing from us in these quotes from the great controversy. We cannot know how much we owe to Christ for the peace and protection which we enjoy. It is the restraining power of God that prevents mankind from passing fully under the control of Satan. The disobedient and unthankful have great reason for gratitude, for God's mercy and long suffering in holding in check the cruel, malignant power of the evil one. But when men pass the limits of divine forbearance, that restraint is removed. 
God does not stand toward the sinner as an executioner of the sentence against transgression, but he leaves the rejectors of his mercy to themselves to reap that which they have sown. Every ray of light rejected, every warning despised or unheeded, every passion indulged, every transgression of the law of God is a seed sown which yields its unfailing harvest. The Spirit of God, persistently resisted, is at last withdrawn from the sinner, and then there is left no power to control the evil passions of the soul, and no protection from the malice and enmity of Satan. The destruction of Jerusalem is a fearful and solemn warning to all who are trifling with the offers of divine grace and resisting the pleadings of divine mercy. Never was there given a more decisive testimony to God's hatred of sin and to the certain punishment that will fall upon the guilty. Wow, so here Ellen White tells us that if we keep resisting the Holy Spirit, the Spirit will withdraw, just like the Angel of Mercy. Let's give one more example of this repeating theme. The Angel of Mercy, the Holy Shekinah, who is the Holy Spirit, our intercessor, see Romans 8.26, along with Christ, see Hebrews 7.25, will be grieved to leave this earth when the limit of God's forbearance is reached. Ellen White tells us in Testimonies for the Church, Volume 5, as the approach of the Roman armies was assigned to the disciples of the impending destruction of Jerusalem, so may this apostasy, Sunday laws, be assigned to us that the limit of God's forbearance is reached, that the measure of our nation's iniquity is full, and that the angel of mercy, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth, is about to take her flight, never to return. There's only so much she can do. We must do our part in our own salvation. Philippians 2.12 says, Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God which worketh in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Ellen White comments, There is a work that every one of us must do if we would be saved in the eternal world. But while we must on our part do what God has given us to do, we must realize that, having done all, we should come far short of salvation. Did not the Lord on his part do that which finite sinful man cannot do for himself? The religious life is wholly dependent upon the blending of both human and divine forces. Man is to work out his own salvation, but he cannot do this without divine aid. And although Christ has paid an infinite price to save the souls of men from everlasting ruin, he will not do that part of the work which was left for man to perform. Finally, Ephesians 4.30 says, And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Thank you for staying with us through the entire video. We invite you to visit our website, www.bdsda.com, to learn more about who we are and, just as important, who we are not. Please join us each week as we will continue to offer new and interesting insights for your Sabbath School studies. God bless. Many blessings. <laughs>